uniform stroke. It's, it's a connected stroke throughout your entire body. Your legs, your feet are all one with your upper body. Yeah. There is not, um, a lot of times when we, we sit down when we paddle, obviously, a stupid thing to say, a lot of times you sit down, you go to paddle, and you forget about your legs. You just, you're just going through the motions. Uh, if you have boats with foot braces, it makes it a lot easier to remember that your legs are actually there. If you do not have boats with leg braces, um, the way that I paddle in them is I spread my knees and I, I press them against the side of the boat. Obviously hard if you're in three, four, it's wide, it doesn't matter. So from here is the beginning. I come forward and nail the catch. And when I nail the catch, I'm keeping a pressure on my feet. And it's not a kick. It's not a vicious, violent kick. It's just a constant connection throughout your entire body that begins with the plant. And I put the bulk of the energy on my opposite lat here. A lot of it has to do with your top hand, your top arm. This is a guide. This helps me move the paddle quickly and efficiently, right? But that's really all it's good for. If I set a paddle and try to just pull it with my bottom hand, I'm not going to get much out of it. But if I use this as a guide to get my blade there, and this as a means for applying, imagine like you're in the gym and you're doing a lat pull down. <coughs> Just this motion. That's where you're getting the meat of your power. And the efficiency. This muscle, your core, your opposite lat is gonna last a lot longer than this bicep. As strong as it may look, it's a lot more appealing than looking at a opposite lat. It's gonna die out like that. Opposite lat, core, and legs are what, could, that's what's going to keep you going. That's what's going to be the most efficient over time. Okay? So if I'm on my right side, I'm at rest here, I have a quick recovery, remember two to one ratio, that's the goal, two to one, two to one, two in the water, one in the air. I catch, I put the bulk of my tower not on this arm, not on my bottom hand, on this opposite lat here. And it's weird, when I first started trying to do this stroke, it, it's, it's weird, yeah? But a lot of it comes from the hips and the legs. Yeah, there. What we, on that. What we call it is hinging. So we've been taught that when you're coming forward, it's been this big, open the shoulders, yeah you know, the twist, the twist mm -hmm. and reach. Mm -hmm. We're kind of eliminating that. Mm -hmm. And what we do now to bring up a drill for this is <coughs> sitting in the boat and you'll watch, if you watch uh, the boaty videos or whatever, you know, on top teams, they get on a wave and they all do this cute little rocking thing. You watch them go, what the hell are those guys doing? That's a drill. That's the timing. That's your metronome. Mm. So what, instead of creating this big twist and hit, you know, reach and that, this is your new reach, hinging from the waist. So kind of keeping somewhat of a relative straight upper body and using the hips to tuck under and lean forward. Now when you're here, this is the point where you can open up. Mm. But the general motion and the drill that we do uh, at NEC is we'll sit in the canoe before we even get started. What is three, two, one, and everybody bobs. And you'd be amazed how many people get out of whack. <laughs> you'd be amazed. Mm -hmm. And it, it's as mm -hmm. simple as it seems, yeah. it really blows your mind. And this does a lot for a team. Because if you can all six sit there and just do this mm -hmm. stupid thing, and you sit five in the morning, God, you know, <laughs> the last thing I wanted to do, it helps, right? So that's, the hinging is the core of this stroke. Hinging from the hips, up and down. And when you push with the legs, you're not pushing down like you're trying to stand up. 
you're pushing, I want this chair to go back. So when I, when I hinge, it's not this huge motion. For the drill, yes, overdo it for the drill. Go beyond your comfort zone of, of hinging. But when you're actually paddling, you watch a lot of guys, they're really only doing this little motion. But a little bit goes a long way. So you hinge, and you're trying not to put too much of your upper body weight beyond your thighs and pushing down and coming up, because it will bounce, especially when you do get into the unlimited boats. Um, or uh, even, even the Matahina is a lot lighter than like your lightnings and whatnot. Uh, it, it can create that bounce if you get big guys. And it's, it's a fine line. But if you can engage the legs to not push down, but to more push forward, and to think about it as you plant and you're pushing the boat forward as you sit up, you're trying to go from forward to up, this rested position, that should hopefully silence the bouncing of the boat.